Turns out, brother, the new Urza is pretty fun to build and play. Melding this monster planeswalker is satisfying, carries some real power. So as you all may have noticed from the scads of videos I've done, I like building decks. A long time ago I realized there's a certain satisfaction in building a deck that hums like a refrigerator. The attached deck list, as always, is just a suggestion. This is just a skeleton on which you can mold a deck suitable for your desires. You can go for the moon and lean all the way into combo. You can include a bunch of interaction for your meta, or you can cut the combo and go into totally sweet artifact creatures. I don't care, bro. My buddy Kevin told me something that rings true to me to this day, that when it comes to EDH, there's pre-con level and then there's everything else. Once you modify a pre-con, you take a step into an increased power level and really enter the realm of EDH. That being said, I strive to create decks that can compete in my own personal meta, a meta that I helped shape and create by fielding powerful decks. I obsessively goldfish my creations and I want to see things happen by turn 7 or so. Whether that be an overwhelming board state, an unassailable value engine, or a combo on the field. However, I don't want to build CEDH decks. There's nothing wrong with those decks. Don't get me wrong, they just aren't my jam. You basically have combo lines, you have interaction, you have protection for your combos. There's a couple different archetypes. Those games, when I watch them on YouTube or whatever, they're really fun to watch. I enjoy seeing the tense, interactive gameplay. But the nature of CDH is... Uh, optimization after optimization. The card pool kind of gets winnowed down and that's just anathema to me. I want a wider card pool to play in, brother. All right, with all that being said, I do enjoy combo decks and this is one. I will say that the combos are interruptible, they're fragile, they're a little less protected in this version of Urza Lord Protector. This is gonna be a fun little romp, guys. Hey, and while you're here, if you like deck techs and you like hearing the sound of my stupid voice, leave a comment, like, subscribe, just do anything for the algo rhythm. All right, let's get into it. Urza, Lord Protector, one white and a blue for a legendary creature, human artificer, it's a two four. Artifact, instant, and sorcery spells you cast cost one less to cast. It has seven. If you both own and control Urza, Lord Protector, and an artifact named the Mightstone and Weakstone, exile them, then meld them into Urza Planeswalker. Activate only as a sorcery. The static effect on this card is bonkers on a three mana commander. Some of the fun in building this deck is the challenge of melding this thing. You need specific tutors to dig it out. So you're going to dig out the Might Stone and Weak Stone. It's five generic mana for legendary artifact Power Stone. When it enters the battlefield, you can either draw two cards or target creature gets minus five, minus five until the end of turn. Has tap, add colorless, colorless. This mana can't be spent to cast non-artifact spells. Note the restricted mana. It comes into play in this deck for sure. Drawing two cards is awesome and the ETB triggers even if we tutor it onto the battlefield with one of the mass amount of tutors we packed into this deck. All right, these two monsters meld into this beast, Urza Planeswalker, starting loyalty is seven. Once during each of your turns, you may activate an additional loyalty ability of Urza Planeswalker. It has plus two, artifact instant and sorcery spells you cast this turn cost two less to cast, you gain two life. Plus one, draw two cards, then discard a card. Zero, create two one one colorless soldier artifact creature tokens. Negative 3, Exile, Target, Non-Land, Permanent, and Negative 10. Artifacts and Planeswalkers you control gain Indestructible until end of turn. Destroy all Non-Land Permanents. The abilities on these thing is very sexy. The minus 10 can be a win condition by itself, or at least set your opponent so far behind you can assemble a win condition fairly easily. All right, so the deck I built is not CEDH, but it is a combo deck and it is powerful. It's a little Rube Goldberg machine that seeks to win by drawing your deck and comboing out. All this is enabled by the commander, which makes it very satisfying to play. There are a few combos in the deck. The first revolves around Sensei's Divining Top. If Urza's on the battlefield, or if we've activated a plus two on Urza Planeswalker, or if we have one of our cost reducers, the top is free. Wh whoopee, free top. In the real world, the top is currently shipped to your house for below 20 bucks. I bought one yesterday, so maybe look into that if you want one for your decks. There are certain cards that allow us to play the top from the top. Cream of the crop! of our library. Mystic Forge and the Reality Chip let us do that so we can draw our entire deck. The top second ability allows us to draw a card, then put the top on top. We cast it from the top for free, then activate it again. If we have our cost reduction effect out, we end up casting mana rocks for free and we can most likely cast our infinite mana combo. And then we're all set to blast everyone with Walking Ballista. Our infinite mana combo is Basalt Monolith and Rings of Bright Hearth. Get both of these out, preferably for free or for very few mana. 
Basically, we tap base alt monolith, pay the three mana to untap base alt monolith. We copy the untap ability with rings of a bright hearth for two additional mana. We tap the base alt monolith after our first untap trigger, adding three floating mana. Rinse and repeat with the floating mana for infinite cosmic power. All right, we get our combo out, but what if uh, Walking Ballista is stuck in our deck? We have several infinite mana sinks to dig it out. Staff of Domination does everything, but the most important things it does is tap to draw cards and then untap itself. You can just draw cards all day and have fun, dude. We also include a few key cards like Stroke of Genius. If we can pump infinite mana into this, we draw our whole deck and then we're doing whatever we want. Stroke of Genius even has Urza on the art, at least I think it's Urza. But have you ever seen an old man with a magic stick? I have. When I was walking home from the bar at 5.30 a.m., I saw this same dude. Arkham Dagson, three and a blue for a legendary creature, human artificer, it's a 2-2. Has tap, target artifact creature's controller, sacrifices it. That player may search their library for a non-creature artifact card, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle. Okay, there is a caveat here. This is a conditional tutor. You need to sacrifice an artifact creature, but if you do, Arkham can get whatever you want. This is a good opportunity to highlight our artifact creature suite. There are several small artifact creatures that are prime fodder for Arkham. Ethereum Sculptor, Foundry Inspector, Joywear's Familiar are all cost reducers and integral parts of the deck in their own right. They can be sacrifice fodder or they can help us cast our more impactful artifacts. Then you got Junk Diver, you got Mirror Retriever, and you got Scrap Trawler. These cards want to die anyways, I don't know why, but they do. So they can get back an artifact that ended up in our graveyard earlier in the game. We also have Palladium Myrrh, Ornithopter of Paradise, and our old friend, the Solemn Simulacrum. Solemn basically comes out, he's all fresh, he's clean, he's grabbing a basic land, he's looking around, then he realizes that we're going to kill him mercilessly to draw a card, and he's suddenly sad. Alas, it is his fate. And you know what else needs artifacts to sacrifice? The old cool Dotha Forge Master. I'm probably saying that wrong. Listen, you're going to get at me in the comments for mispronouncing stuff. I'm going to do it on purpose. This guy doesn't seem to be too sad about his fate. He's just a cool dude who can sacrifice three artifacts, including himself, to go get the Might Stone, Weak Stone, or a combo piece. This suite of creatures, in addition to the rest of the artifacts in our deck, can also be fodder for Oswald Fiddlebender. This guy's out there running the Trump 2024 campaign right now. He's got some magical tinkering. Sacrifice an artifact, search your library for an artifact card with mana value equal to one plus the sacrifice artifact's mana value. Put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle activate only as a sorcery. I'll also mention this here so we can get a little clever. We include some artifact lands that can be sacrificed for Oswald. We can go up the chain from there to the Sensei's Divining Top, or you can just get a Soul Ring if you want to be cheeky. Look at these two creeps. We got the Tribute Mage and the Trinket Mage. These guys never tip at restaurants. These can get us artifacts of mana value one or less or two respectively. One or less can get a Sensei's Divining Top and two can dig out our Moon Silver Key. So that's two generic mana for an artifact, one in tap, sacrifice moon silver key. Search your library for an artifact card with mana value with a mana ability or a basic land. Reveal it and put it to your hand, then shuffle. This can, in turn, dig out the Might Stone and Weak Stone or Basalt Monolith, both of which have a mana ability, brother. Fabricate. This is just the classic tutor. It's been reprinted a bunch of times and is still five bucks. I have a few of the old school Mirrodin version, and this card rocks my socks, dude. Merchant Scroll, one and a blue for a sorcery. Search your library for a blue instant card, reveal that card, put it into your hand, then shuffle. This is one of the best cards out of Homelands. This is usually a way to get Cyclonic Rift, but we can get one of our tutors. We can get the aforementioned Stroke of Genius, or we can get another artifact tutor, which I'm going to do in the next slide, buddy. And get ready, it's War of Invention. X blue 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 for an instant has improvise. Search your library for an artifact card with mana value X or less, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle. Reshape, very similar card, but it's not an instant. X blue blue for a sorcery. As an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice an artifact. Search your library for an artifact card with mana value X or less, put it onto the battlefield, and then shuffle. We can sacrifice an artifact creature or some mana rock to get exactly what we need right onto the field. And you got solve the equation. Look at this young lady. She just solved the equation. It's two and a blue for a sorcery. Search your library for an instant speed sorcery card. Reveal it. Put it in your hand. Then shuffle. This can get us reshape, war of invention, or a little card I like to call Granny Sizzles. Enlighten Tutor. It's only 40 bucks. It's one white mana for an instant. Search your library for an artifact or enchantment card. Reveal it. Then shuffle. Put that card on top. Just put the top directly to the top if you already have Mystic Forge or the Reality Chip on the battlefield or just get whatever you want. 
Now the rest of the deck can be whatever you want, but I included about 12 mana rocks and a bunch of interaction. I'll mention Klaka Omens here as well as Voltaic Key. These little nuggets can untap our rocks to make some extra mana, because the activated ability on our commander is pretty expensive. One time when I was 17, I got pulled over. The cop pulled me out of the car and smashed my face against the hot hood of my uh, 1979 Chevy Malibu and said that I fit the description. But you know what? I'm going to put the deck list in the description so nobody else makes that mistake ever again. Overall, very fun deck, especially if you manage to meld Urza into that sweet planeswalker. There are other combo lines you can include if you want to get really spicy. Just look them up, you silly goose. I would say this is a mid-power combo deck, a lot of interaction, a lot of decision points for close to 200 bucks. You need to know your deck very well so that you can dig out the pieces you need at any given interval. Urza is so generically powerful, you could just include the tutors, skip the combos, and go with tasty artifact creatures if that's more in line with your meta. Check out my list, Goldfish it, and for gosh sakes, have fun. Snicky G from Better Commander, signing off.